starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Fields of Gold. This story comes from a Reddit thread in which the original poster asked the question of what those who had died and been resuscitated remembered seeing. A Reddit user replied to the thread and explained a story that their mom had told them about when her heart stopped during surgery. Their mom thankfully was brought back and when she recovered enough and woke up from surgery, she later explained that all she remembered was being in a field of flowers. So here I am, hearing that, thinking of Wizard of Oz, everyone's just skipping down the yellow brick road, but turns out maybe it's nothing like that. There was one Redditor who commented on this story with a hot take that kind of made me feel a little uneasy about the whole thing. They explained how it makes sense that the field of flowers is traditionally a more calming image, but that it feels odd to them. A little unnerving and empty, totally devoid of other people. I'm not gonna lie, that does sound quite eerie, but I'm sure for some of you watching this video, that truly does sound like heaven. In our number nine spot today, we have The Flames. This afterlife story comes from someone named Don Brubaker, and during their experience, they know for a fact that they were in hell. They explained that there was a sort of low murmuring that could be heard around them, like they were among a bunch of people that were sort of grumbling. Suddenly, there was a huge black door right in front of them, and they could kind of feel the air be Begin to change, like there was a glow and shimmer that showed the heat that was coming from whatever lay beyond the door. As the door opened, they saw this huge room that they described as an oven, just completely filled with flames. Normally upon seeing this, you'd be compelled to run in the opposite direction, but instead Don explained that they felt drawn like a magnet right into the center of the flames, despite their feeling of complete fear. There were hundreds of people already in the flames, just roasting to death, but not dead. Don ends the story by just saying that once they were inside, the door slammed shut behind them. Like, Don, what happened next? How'd we get back here? Apparently Don writes for Netflix because that was the cliffhanger of the century. Number eight, Stairway to Heaven. This next one comes from Dr. Pirate 42 Great name, right off the bat. I don't believe in the paranormal. I'm a pretty reasonable guy. I have degrees in science and healthcare and I'm pretty grounded. Hot start, right off the bat. But since I was a child, I had this memory of me stumbling out of the back door of some club. I couldn't hold myself either. Maybe I was really intoxicated, whatever the case. And I slipped down a staircase, hit my head in the alley, and died. I was about 19. I was thin, had long blonde hair. I was wearing a brown, red leather jacket. I remembered the neon signs, the staircase, the door I walked out of, even the interior. I could paint the picture perfectly if I had any talent in art. Anyways, two years ago, I took a leisure trip to Budapest, and while exploring the Runes pub with my wife, I found the alley. That same one that I remembered. It was funny because I remarked to my wife earlier when we arrived that I felt something about Budapest that, you know, felt like home and felt familiar in a way. And I felt oddly too comfortable to be there, like I could have never left. I think about this quite often. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Dr. Pirate 42. Awesome, again, name, great name again. Pretty brave of you to be excited in this situation. To be honest, if I found the place that I died in a previous life, I would freak out. I wouldn't be calm, cool, or collect. I would walk down those stairs so slowly and be like, don't do it again, don't do it again. But alas, you're alive and well this time around. Love it. Drink responsibly also, please, maybe, thanks. In our number seven spot today, we have The Tunnel. This afterlife story comes from someone who goes by the online username Free Hat McClough, and they said, quote, It felt like I was in a long tunnel, just floating and feeling very tired. I remember falling asleep and having a dream that I was in the kitchen in the house where I grew up and my dad was cooking breakfast. I could hear a commotion and chaos at one end of the tunnel, and at the other, there was a warm light that felt peaceful. Then, all of a sudden, I was abruptly in the chaos of an emergency room. That would really be quite the feeling. You'd be so grateful that you woke up, but also going from that kind of peace to the utter chaos and calamity of an emergency room would be jarring and probably a little frightening to say the least. Number six, floating. My mother and I were in a very bad car crash. She went into cardiac arrest and was resuscitated with the paddles. She told me that she was then floating above her own body and then abruptly ended up in a tunnel. Suddenly she heard my deceased uncle tell her that she had to go back and that it wasn't her time yet. She said that after he said so, the tunnel then closed and she ended up back in her body. Those are the words of the woman's daughter, Gina. Well, I'm glad you're both okay. That's probably pretty horrifying. This is another theme that comes up often, seeing a deceased loved one afterwards. Like her uncle saying it wasn't her time yet. That's so common, it's creepy. The common argument here in this case from a scientific point of view is that it's our brain fooling us. It's releasing chemicals that make us hallucinate. Your body releases these chemicals when you're born or when you die, but the argument Tucker is trying to make here with their studies is that hallucinations are the result of your sensory cortex going haywire. But when you're dying, 
that part of the brain it can't function. It's not a hallucination or a trip, yet this experience still changes people. Drive safe. Thanks for sharing, Gina. In our number five spot today, we have The Shapes. This afterlife experience starts out with someone explaining that this is a story that happened to their dad who had open heart surgery. They said that during their operation, he briefly died on the table before having his heart restarted. During this time on the other side, they explained that he went to hell. They go on to write, quote, It apparently consisted of lots of geometric shapes and mirrors. It was one of those things where he just kind of knew. It hit him and there was no doubt that's what it was. He said it was the worst thing he could imagine. He was laying on a hospital bed with the worst pain, not able to move, locked in this geometric eternity. Listen, I truly believe that for some people, hell definitely could just be a ton of geometric shapes and mirrors. But if that is the case, then where did Hot Flames Oven Guy go to? I'm just saying, I personally take geometric shapes over hot oven roasting, but I definitely can't speak for everyone here. Number four, hay is for horses. This one comes from username Miriam67. They say, I don't have kids, but when my brother was a toddler, he said something to my mom about throwing hay in the window for the horses. My grandfather died before his birth and was a farmer, and the barn had windows and he would just throw hay in the windows for the horses to eat. My mom was really freaked out at this point, but he never said anything else similar like that ever again. That's pretty awesome. That's gotta be comforting to remember. Stories like this, I enjoy. It's tame, it's cute, doesn't sound made up or stretched. It makes me believe in the afterlife. Just a, just a touch, just a little bit. Something similar actually happened in my family. My cousin was born not too long after my grandfather had passed, and apparently when he was a toddler, he would say some weird stuff as well. Like he would ask how the kids were, just with a thing of milk in his hand, walking around with no shirt. He's like, hey, how are the kids? I'm like, what kids? You don't have kids. I know for a fact you don't have any kids. I'm your family, that's how I know. He would just go in empty rooms and talk. I mean, hard to say, but I've heard some weird things. Recollections like this convince me, so thanks for sharing. In our number three spot today, we have What's Going On? This is an afterlife story that really had me intrigued because it's like nothing I've ever heard before. It's not the typical tunnel with light at the end or a field of flowers. No. Instead, this person saw a bunch of math. I mean, not exactly, but they wrote, quote, Through open doors, I glimpsed at enormous rooms filled with complex equipment. In several of the rooms, hooded figures bent over intricate charts and diagrams or sat at the controls of elaborate consoles flickering with lights. I gazed into rooms lined floor to ceiling with documents on parchment, clay, leather, metal, and paper. Here, the thought occurred to me, are assembled the important books of the universe. This afterlife experience happened to Dr. George Richie and it really is compelling. Who are these hooded figures? Your guess is as good as mine. What are they up to and what's all this equipment they have? I'll never know. Or maybe we'll all find out. I suppose only time will tell for sure. Number two, new hat, old life. My daughter asked me, remember my fancy hat? And when I said no, she said, yeah, before I was dead, I used to work at a bank. <laughs> at that point, I'd be like, sorry, stop, you're grounded. Stop, go to your room. I saved my money and bought a hat in a round box. I was on the bus and a man almost sat on it. Then the bus crashed and I died. She was about three and totally casual about the whole thing. That was from user Raspberry Sweaty. Also not sweetie, it's Raspberry Sweaty. I did a double take with that name. Yeah, that's a convincing story because when I was three, I didn't understand money or how it worked. I didn't understand how a bank functions. I mean, to this day, I still don't really know. I don't know, why do they keep calling all the time? What do they want? Also, sorry to hear about your new slash old hat. Hopefully in this life, you got a newer, fancier hat. For her birthday, let's all pitch in and buy her an old timey hat. Worst gift ever for a young child, but she'll know. She'll open it and she'll be like, oh, I remember, the bank. I didn't sign out. In our number one spot today, we have best friend. Okay. This is one story that truly I think a lot of us hope the afterlife is like, should we all come to find out that there is one? This story is from someone named Bryce Bond and they wrote, quote, racing toward me as a dog I once had, a black poodle named Pepe. He jumped into my arms, licking my face. I can smell him, feel him, hear his breathing and sense his great joy at being with me again. Honestly, that sounds a lot like heaven to me. Imagine all the pets you've ever had just waiting there at Rainbow Bridge for ya. I mean, I could tear up just thinking about it. That is probably the most comforting story of the afterlife that I've ever heard. Kicking off the list at number 10, the beings. These words came from someone who claimed to see hell during their close call with death. We're off to a hot start, literally, here we go. They said, I remember feeling terrified. It was so cold and I could not see anything below me, so it was hard to figure out what was going on exactly. As the beings 
just pulled me in closer, it seemed squishy and wet, as well as dark and cold. Meanwhile, the beings all around me were ripping and tearing at me. That's horrible. I was thinking that I didn't like this at all and wanted to go back. I do not know what these beings are, nor am I interested in finding out more than fair. That sounds like the most horrifying experience at this point. Honestly, I'd rather take nothingness at the end of a life, like some others talk about, than this. I can barely handle sleep paralysis demons, let alone demons from the other side. Hard pass for me. Glad you're okay, but hard pass. Number nine. Flipped over. This next one comes from a user named Harry and Lana. One semester, they had a class where a man came in to explain his near-death experience, which is, I gotta say, it's a pretty exciting class. That's a fun drop-in spot, I guess. The man was kayaking with a friend, and he ended up flipping his kayak over. Worst scenario ever. And then he got sucked under by the current. His friend had to watch him pass out underwater, then get dragged down the river, which is just a nightmare scene. And during his time unconscious, the man describes this dark place, almost as if it was a cave. Maybe had something to do with the fact that he was in a kayak, maybe it was just coincidence, I don't know. But the walls were soft and almost velvet-like, if that makes sense. And at the end of this cave, there was a plethora of colors, and he described it as a kaleidoscope almost, which is kind of beautiful and almost sickening. I would probably throw up looking at that. It was a stained glass window that was moving, essentially. It was Doctor Strange type stuff. But he saw dark figures passing by on the other side of this glass, which is the concerning part. Who's there? I saw Insidious, maybe it's like that kind of demonic stuff, that dude on the other side of the glass who's like wheeling something, maybe it's something like that, or maybe it's something nice. I don't know, either way, I want nothing to do with that. He also said you must have to be pretty terrible to go to hell because he himself wasn't the greatest of guys before this. Mm, so, you know, know what I mean? His friend caught up to his body, he was luckily revived, but now the man feels a stronger connection with everybody, and he's grateful to have had this experience, which is nice, I guess, in this sense. The user finishes the story by saying they hope this was calming to hear, as the rest of these are pretty horrifying. I'm not gonna lie, it gets scarier as we go on. In our number eight spot today, we have 45 years. In 1943, Dr. George Ritchie died of pneumonia, but after nine long minutes, he came back and was sure to tell the tale of what happened while he was gone. He went on to write a book called Return from Tomorrow, and my life after dying. He recounts a lot of stuff in this book from an out-of-body experience to meeting people, but the last thing he remembered was meeting someone who he calls God. Whoever this person or being was that he met left him a mental message that told him, quote, it is left to humanity which direction they shall choose. I came to this planet to show you through the life I led how to love. Without our father you can do nothing, neither could I. I showed you this. You have 45 years. When he came back to his body he explained that his throat was on fire and that he felt weight on his chest that was crushing him. I'm not exactly sure what this message was supposed to mean. I mean mostly the whole 45 years thing. Dr. Ritchie passed away in 2007, which was almost 64 years after his near-death experience. But whatever this message was intended to mean, that was probably the coolest and most terrifying thing in the world. Number seven, love is in the air. It's 1983. Dave Bennett, chief engineer of an underwater research vessel, aka my worst nightmare of a job. One night he was in the ocean and he didn't mean to be. He was thrown in from the vessel and and he drowned. What he felt afterwards was wild. He felt like there was some omnipresence keeping him from being alone, which is comforting, but also terrifying on paper. He felt some sort of comfort and recalls the darkness slowly coming to life. As darkness was slowly fading into light, he began to move towards it. Dave himself reflects on this, saying, as I got closer, there were waves and waves of love that were just wrapping me in this warm embrace. It was the most amazing feeling I ever had, and it felt as if this love was actually permeating my being, and it transformed me into this being of life. That's a lot of knowledge. Some, you're now woke. As I got closer to the light, the light appeared to me like it was millions upon millions of fragments of light." End quote. That's jam-packed, okay. He even recalls seeing his family, not like his family that he knew, or even ancestors for that matter, but his soul family. Apparently that's a thing. His soul family told him to go back to the land of living and fulfill his purpose. And after 18 minutes later, he popped back to the surface just just full of knowledge and wisdom, it seems. In our number six spot today, we have The Void. I'm not exactly sure what caused this woman's close encounter with death, but she is another person who experienced the black void that a lot of other people have as well. She explains that she was drawn in by the dark void after her death. She said she did not feel her body, which made her totally terrified. She said this is when she just experienced nothingness and said it was like a dreamlike experience. She said she felt drawn in by this void and said it felt like she was heading towards another realm of existence. I'm not exactly sure what that would feel like, but I think I am very grateful that I don't. In the end, she was of course able to be resuscitated and brought back, which I am very glad about. Number five, Panorama View. This one comes from a man named Danian Brinkley. He's a US Marine, businessman, and God, apparently. He survived numerous near-death experiences. One time in 1975, a bolt of lightning had hit a telephone pole, traveled all the way down the line into his body, and then he was dead for 28 minutes straight. This guy woke up in a morgue, which I gotta say, people move fast, 28 minutes, that's, they really, 
No time wasted. Brinkley recalls floating above his body the entire time. He was watching from above as doctors declared him dead, which I can't even imagine what that feels like. But he recalls the feeling. He saw his entire life passing in front of him like a 360 degree panorama. He had missed nothing at all. You know how many hairs were in the nose of the doctor who pulled you from your mother? You know everything that there is from the time you open your eyes. You have complete cognitive awareness, no doubt about it. And that's all happening at the same time, no doubt about it. And then you watch the same life from a second person's point of view as if you were your own best friend. So you can see how silly, how funny, and how dumb and how stupid life was, but it's through one of your best friend's point of view, you know? There's no judgments, just looking. And then you literally become every person you've ever encountered, and you feel the direct results of your interaction between you and that person. So no one gets away with anyone or anything. Well, thank you for your service, Danian. Also, that was the wildest thing I've ever heard in my life. We'll talk about him more. He's obviously gonna appear back up in this list. In our number four spot today, we have The Strangers. This story comes from Tyler Black 729 on Reddit, but it is actually a story from their father and his experience while having open heart surgery when he was in his 20s. The doctors had to stop his heart for around 20 to 30 minutes during the procedure so that they could put a mechanical valve in. Before this surgery, he explained that he wasn't on a great path in life and had been involved in some things he definitely shouldn't have been. So while his heart was stopped on the operating table, he found himself in a very dark place and he began wandering and searching around. This is when he started running into really scary people that looked very strange and they were all screaming at him. He was running away as fast as he could and found a corner to hide in. The people were continually getting closer though and right before they got him he saw his grandmother who had previously passed away and she reached down to grab him. The next thing he remembered was being back in the hospital. He is convinced that he was in a temporary hell and this scare was enough for him to completely turn his life around. Number three, Danian Brinkley again. Yeah, like I said, he survived multiple near-death experiences so we had to throw in one more. I know you're curious, right? Of course. In 1989, during an open heart surgery, Brinkley was again declared dead. He was sure this time that he had visited the afterlife, so he wrote a book about it this time. This book was called Saved by the Light. When questioned about his time seeing the other side and if heaven and hell were a real thing, he had an interesting response. He said, if I didn't go to hell in the last four journeys, nobody's going to hell, okay? When you learn you don't die, when you learn that you're a spiritual being, you're not going to hell. That's enough to inspire you to change. I don't know. It's almost like a parent being like, hey, we're not going to ground you, just you know, be good. It's like, mm, okay, okay. In our number two spot today, we have Peter's NDE story. A Polish man named Peter once tried to take his own life, and that is how his experience on the other side happened. He explained that his first visions were of people right beside him, but they were people in his life who had already passed away. He said that they were all friendly to him, but that they were also terrifyingly sad. After this, he explained that he felt like he was being dragged into a dark abyss that was supposed to be the afterlife, and in seeing the dark distance, he realized how frightening the situation was. He then explains that he was brought back to life by a commanding voice. I'm not sure what this commanding voice was, but I'm glad he heard it and listened. Peter's story has also been featured in a book titled The Polish Life After Life. And finally, number one, Hannah's pneumonia. This last one of the day comes from a Czech woman named Hannah who experienced complications from pneumonia, which led her to her near-death experience. While others on this list have somewhat calming recollections of the afterlife, how they felt and all that jazz and how hell may not even be a thing, which is, I gotta say, phew. This one here is more of what Hannah saw. It left me feeling off. Hannah saw a gray area that had lots of scattered boards and beams of light and stuff. And then she explains that in the top right, there was a circular light with an extremely bright center that she said felt really inviting and that it was pulling her in almost. This was like the center thing, I don't know. This could be the light that Danian saw and titled his book after, who knows. It was at this point she realized what was happening and the light was leading her into the official other side. And suddenly I realized with horror that it was a transition between life and death, she says. I do not want to enter. I've not tried everything in my life and she was brought back swiftly after that moment. Maybe the trick is to tell whatever or whoever that you're not ready. It's pretty wild also to do, so who knows. Thanks for sharing, Hannah. We're glad everything's okay. Kicking off the list at number 10, when I lived in Ireland. Jim Tucker and Jennifer Kim Penberthy are psychiatry professors at the University of Virginia. They think about death a lot pretty much. Tucker specializes in near-death experiences with young adults who claim to have memories of a past life. Yeah, that's a job, apparently, coming out of school. I didn't learn about any of that. This is a theme on this channel. We've heard about these cases in part one and two, and they believe there's more than living in this body and then simply dying. For example, Reddit user Aproballs hit the World Wide Web to share their experience and how they remembered a past life when they were young. 
Between the ages of three and five, I talked about when I lived in Ireland, and I was able to tell my parents the names of the places that I remembered. My mom said she was in absolute shock because I was so casual about it, more than fair. Also, this was in the early 80s in South America. There was no internet or anything like that. We're not Irish, and no one in my family has ever been to Ireland or has any interest in it. Subtle, subtle roast with that one. One day I just stopped talking about it, just like that. I don't remember anything about this supposed past life, and I don't remember talking about Ireland as a child either. Well, thanks for sharing. Uh, honestly, to be fair, some places in Ireland sound made up as is, you know? Like this place. I can't even say that name, that's why we pulled up a picture. Mucan Ganeer de Halia. Awesome. Put that in Google Maps, I dare you. I probably said this word after a bar night myself, but that's a wild story nonetheless. The no internet thing really sold me on this story. I hope you had a wonderful St. Patrick's Day in your past and current life this past week. Thanks for sharing. In our number nine spot today, we have The Dream. This Reddit story comes from someone who really knows how to paint quite a vivid picture. This person actually experienced their close call after being impaled with a fillet knife. They go on to write, quote, I had tried to crawl up from my basement to phone 911, but I was so weak and every time I moved, I started bleeding harder. I remember passing out and having the sensation like I was leaving a dark room and moving outside into the sun. I stopped panicking and this feeling of pure contentment settled over me. I was floating over a garden where all of the plants were giving off light and I could see a huge amorphous shape above me that was made up of every color in existence, including colors I have never seen before and couldn't possibly describe. The shape seemed familiar like I was a part of it and it was beckoning to me and filling me with pure ecstasy and understanding as I looked at it. Then a man who looked an awful lot like Dream from the Sandman comics, which I was obsessed with at the time, walked over to me through the garden and told me that I could couldn't go home yet, that it wasn't time. I started weeping, but I was filled with a feeling of understanding, like I knew that I had to go back despite not wanting to. The man had tears streaming down his face, and he took my hand and led me back to my body, which was in an ambulance. My older brother had found me and called 911. This sounds like while having one of the most horrific experiences, this person was having one of the most peaceful and tranquil moments of their entire life. It really is interesting what these kinds of experiences can do to our bodies and brains. Number eight, guest appearance. This Reddit story starts out when the OP was in the middle of having an anaphylactic reaction, and at this point they had stopped breathing entirely. What an absolute nightmare. They remember having visions and hallucinations during this experience, and once they were healed up, they figured the hallucinations and whatever they saw, they figured that was just part of the reaction. They didn't think much of it at first until they explained to their mom later on what exactly it was that they saw. They saw a middle-aged man who wasn't in scrubs standing at the end of the hospital bed while all the staff was running around and doing their business. I was having a non-verbal conversation with him, and he was telling me to calm down and to focus on my breathing. He wore a tropical style button down shirt, one of those old school newsboys hats and had a very pleasant demeanor. Mom then showed me a photo of my grandfather that I'd never seen before and it was the same guy at the foot of my bed and he died before I was even born. So he'd never even seen them, that's crazy. Well, this man has style in the afterlife, it seems, that's pretty wild. Has this happened to anybody else before? Have you experienced any type of reaction where you unconsciously see your family? You probably don't forget something like that, so let us know in the comments down below. In our number seven spot today, we have shadows, sunflowers and streams. This story was posted on Reddit by a user called Through the Shadows and their story is in reference to a time when their wife was in a coma and it was looking like she wasn't going to make it. You know, it's at the point where the hard conversations are being had. Surprisingly, there's a shocking and complete turnaround and she ended up making a completely miraculous recovery. Truly the best outcome of what was likely a horrifying situation and while the storyteller's wife doesn't remember much from her time in the coma, she remembers two very vivid things that she calls dreams. In the first dream, she was having a fun party and everything was great, except for one guy who she calls Sleazy, and she said gave her the creeps. He was charming and invited her to go with him, but she refused and said that she knew that he was a bad guy. This guy then told her that he was going to take her soul and torment it until he destroyed it, which of course led to her running away from him, and then that was the end of that dream. In the second dream, she woke up alone in a field of sunflowers. There was a stream of water that separated the field from this beautiful forest and when she went towards this stream she noticed that there were leaves with people's names on them that she loved like family names, pet names and then they were floating down the stream. At this point she knew she couldn't quite cross the stream so she walked back into the field. Number six, regret. This story comes from a Redditor who had their afterlife experience after attempting to take their own life. They were thankfully saved in the ambulance, they gained consciousness for about five seconds and then they collapsed into a coma right afterwards. After being in a coma for a few weeks they wrote about
said about their experience on the other side. They said, all I remember is a feeling similar to general anesthesia, but before I went black, I was in total panic and I had a total change of heart in my decision to end it seconds before. And then it was just nothing. Like a deep sleep almost. And when I finally awoke from the coma, it was like finally reaching the surface of a pool after diving too deep. I was in the same panic that I was immediately after I jumped from my table. Like I just blinked instead of being knocked out for two weeks. I don't remember anything at all. It was like being in a deep dreamless sleep. Perhaps if I regained consciousness immediately after, I'd remember something more interesting, but nothing is about all I can offer. Honestly, I'll, I'll take that. I'm glad nothing is the case here than demons or anything else that we've seen on this list. And also, we're glad you're alright. Stay strong. In our number five spot today, we have the hair cut catastrophe. This story starts out with the OP explaining that their afterlife experience came after they had suffered a seizure. It's a good time to remind everyone that not all seizures look the same, like how this person just put their head down and simply stopped breathing. How absolutely terrifying that would be. They were getting their hair done at the time, and while they sat there and their lips were turning blue, they could hear what was going on around them as the poor stylist was yelling into their phone for the ambulance to get there. They then go on to write, quote, I was aware of being very warm and comfortable. I knew I was not breathing, but there was no anxiety or discomfort with it. Everything was very relaxed. There is a sense of otherness. I would call it God, no gender, but all other names in different religions applied just as well. I knew then, just as I can tell you my name now, that there is no one right religion or spirituality. Just like you can climb a mountain using more than one trail, so is our non-physical life. When you die, you can choose to stay forever as a separate being, reincarnate into another life, stay for a while, then reincarnate, or simply become part of the otherness and lose yourself in it. I was told it was not my time, that each of us has a set time to live on earth. When your time is up, it is up. I was not given an explanation beyond that. I got sent back and started breathing on my own before the ambulance guys could do much with me. Honestly, this might be the wrong time to ask, but I'm just wondering if the stylist finished the haircut after. Number four, the wake up. This one's a little different from the others on this list. It comes from the Reddit user Brofist Panda. Also, great name. When they experienced death, they said it wasn't really like anything at all. In fact, it was just like sleeping. They do, however, remember being resuscitated. They said it was like shock all of a sudden and then boom, you take the most painful gasp of and your eyes are burning from the lights around you and you see all these people in masks standing around you have to now restrain you so that you don't jump up and rip out your IV. Which, yeah, more than fair. I couldn't imagine waking up to any of that visually, let alone feeling it at the same time. That's That's gotta be a lot. I'm glad you ended up making it. You are a trooper. Hashtag Brofist Panda. I'm gonna steal that name. In our number three spot today, we have 45 minutes. Brian Miller is a man who is from Ohio and he had a death experience after he suffered a terrible massive heart attack. That wasn't the end though, as to the surprise of the nurse and doctors around him, after 45 minutes, his heart began to beat again. The 41-year-old has now gone on to speak about what he saw in the time that he was gone. He said he saw light and that he saw relatives who had already passed away. He explains that he was walking on a path that was lined with flowers when he was stopped by his mother-in-law, who had passed away quite recently. He said, quote, She grabbed a hold of my arm and she told me that it's not your time. While this story is certainly intriguing, what's even more fascinating is how, for the 45 minutes he was gone, his brain did not receive any oxygen, and yet, upon his return, he miraculously did not suffer any brain damage. I have so many questions as to how that's possible. I guess it really was just not his time yet. Number two, the big empty. This story comes from Reddit user Sin Jessica. It's about a near-death experience they had after attempting to take their own life. After they felt time slow down, they came to a place that they referred to as the big empty. And the way they described it, it was just literally just plain nothingness. They say they don't really know how to describe it, but honestly, I think they did a pretty bang up job. They call it a void and say there's no darkness, there's no you, there's no nothing, if that makes sense. It's such a complete lack of anything at all that it can't even be described as empty because that would imply it could be filled with something to begin with. Know what I mean? Some deep stuff like that. It's hard to even realize that this exists because you can't even really perceive it in your mind. Now luckily this person had a nosy neighbor who saw what was unfolding at this time and reacted quickly and saved their life. And since that day things have been a lot better for Sin Justica, which is just the best news. But at the same time, the Reddit user reminds us the Big Empty still haunts them. More than fair. It's called The Big Empty. I mean, that would stick in my brain too. In our number one spot today, we have The Sister Visit. This story comes from someone who is a nurse at an assisted living facility. Imagine that job. That would be a super difficult job to have. I definitely couldn't do it. This story, however, is kind of unbelievable. They write, quote, Yesterday, a resident on another unit but same floor as mine went unresponsive at 7.30. Sternal rub given with no response, eyes closed, no response to anyone or anything. 
thing. Doctor and family called in. Family did not want him sent to a hospital, so they began palliative care, expecting death that same morning. Two hours later, with family in the room, he opens his eyes. His wife says, Where have you been? He says, I went to heaven. It's so beautiful there. My sisters were there and they were healthy and gorgeous. I was asked if I wanted to come back and I said, for a while. He had two sisters that died years ago. Today he ate his breakfast in the dining room and we are all in awe of his story. It's the best possible outcome. The ideal ending. Really, what more could you ask for?